let's move on to the first topic under anorectal disease that is hemorrhoid to understand hemorrhoid i need to understand this three mucosal pad okay three mucosal pad and these three mucosal pad are maintaining the anal continence now anal continence because when they oppose with each other anal continence is maintained now continence means the patient you know uh, like stool can be holded there you know it is opposite uh, term than from incontinence incontinence means there is no control stool is passed on its own continence means yes there is a control from the patient side and these three mucosal fold are really helping in the whole mechanism but they are not the only one which is doing that there are some other things also like a sphincter mechanism so they are composed of sub epithelial vascular cushion and where are they present they are found in the left lateral right anterolateral and right posterolateral portion of the anal canal so again if i compare this with the clock position there are 3 o'clock 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock position 3 7 and 11 okay and the important point is when the pressure is increased in the venous system okay when the back flow is obstructed then they form hemorrhoid and these hemorrhoids can become quite enlarged okay and they can become prolapse also they can become ruptured also and as a result of a lot of clinical feature will be produced now this is a beautiful picture okay which is telling you almost every concept now see that please now these are the enlarged anal cushion look at here it exactly looks like this and it may come downwards sometimes it will it will prolapse outside sometimes there is trauma and it starts to bleed okay uh, uh, when it is still inside there is no pain but when it gets thrombosed and when it come outside it may have pain so all these are clinical features which we are going to talk so this is a prolapse rosette of internal hemorrhoids okay and then uh, these are the three position but in this picture they do not exactly look like 3 o'clock 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock position but remember when we examine our patient usually those hemorrhoids are present in three, these those three important position are just comparable to the clock so nevertheless this is right posterior anal cushion right anterior and left lateral what is the cause or etiology of hemorrhoids now let's go to the important part of this lecture what are the causes the cause of hemorrhoid is not well understood but the following factors are important uh, in the formation of hemorrhoids and these are constipation and prolonged straining at the stool constipation is a very very important point here it is quite easy to understand when when we are constipated okay we take a longer time okay in the toilet longer time and we often strain to pass the stool now during that mechanism there is increase intra abdominal pressure increase intra abdominal pressure and that pressure will be there most of the time when the person is consistently constipated and this is a very important factor in the formation of hemorrhoid so the important cause for constipation is typical western diet means fatty diet which is low in fiber okay and this type of diet usually cause hemorrhoids so to prevent from hemorrhoids you know one of the treatment what we tell to our patient is increase the fiber in the diet so what are the fiber containing a uh, food in your diet which you can include yes sir vegetables fruits very good excellent okay these two are the most important one vegetable and fruits so we need to eat them we need to include them most of the time in our diet 
and along with that drink plenty of water and do a bit of physical exercise if we pay attention on these things you know person will not be constipated and there's no chance uh, of a development of hemorrhoid yes there are some pathological causes also we'll talk about that but uh, this is the most important point hemorrhoids are uncommon in the developing country but this fact is changing very quickly because of the lifestyle where where uh, people are following even in the developing world okay they are having that lavish type of lifestyle they are very inactive they are taking all that you know a junk type of food very fatty food so it is this fact is changing actually because we are also seeing a lot of cases of hemorrhoid in the developing country the second important point is increase anal sphincter tone is increase anal sphincter tone now several effective treatments are there which aim to reduce anal tone including anal stretch procedure and nitroglycerin ointment now why this is explained in the reverse way is to make it easy for you and these are the very important you know treatment part of hemorrhoids now, why are they applied why are they done there because the anal sphincter is contracted it is having increased tone okay and we really do not know what is the reason probably there is some inflammation in the nearby area okay probably it is irritated something like that but it has increased anal sphincter tone in this type of people another one obstruction of venous flow may play a role like see there hemorrhoids is very common during pregnancy now what is the reason for obstruction of venous flow during pregnancy why how can i explain that sir me sir sir me yes. sir yes 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 uh, like uh, uh, like sir sir during pregnancy like two thing can happen sir firstly due to that enlarged uterus and everything sir we can have the compression of the uh, like sir that uh, so that that superior rectal vein or superior hemorrhoidal vein sir we can have the compression as well secondly uh, 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 sir due to high level of progesterone sir like the uh, like sir the smooth muscle in the uh, uh, in the wall of the vein sir they can relax uh, and dilate so sir due to which there also can be that le that less venous flow sir okay now now let me clarify that okay many other students also know this during pregnancy there is uterine enlargement that uterine enlargement can give pressure to the inferior vena cava especially when the lady lies supine especially when she goes to sleep you know uh, this is quite prominent the uterus can compress the inferior vena cava now inferior vena cava is the biggest vein there which is taking all the venous blood towards the heart so when that is happening okay definitely especially the inferior rectal vein okay is the one which is suffering here because inferior rectal vein ultimately drains into the inferior vena cava so that is really helping in the formation of hemorrhoids and uh, next reason what you told is progesterone yes i agree with that also the important reason here is progesterone is you know relaxing type of hormone it is relaxing the smooth muscle and that smooth muscle of the uh, our gut also large intestine all the smooth muscle are also relaxed so there is a chance of constipation in case of pregnancy constipation is also helping the process again these are so these are some of the multiple way another important one is portal hypertension now portal hypertension can be caused by three important way one portal vein thrombosis second cirrhosis of the liver which is called as hepatic causes of portal hypertension and third one okay hepatic vein obstruction we also call it hepatic vein thrombosis or bord chiari syndrome there are so many other causes okay but i am just trying to give you concept here remember these three main causes of portal hypertension now any of these causes portal vein okay pressure is elevated and superior rectal vein it is draining into the portal vein now see that the superior rectal vein is affected here so ultimately that venous cushion which we are talking right now are enlarged so this is the mechanism now let's classify this hemorrhoid internal and external internal hemorrhoids means the origin is above the dentate line and they are generally painless and external 
the origin below the dented line and they are generally painful now this is important one and this dented line or pectinate line is the watershed line or watershed area there everything is you know separate from that line above everything is separate or different below everything is different even the arterial supply is different even the venous drainage is different so let's uh, you know correlate the things again probably the causes of internal hemorrhoids are dilation of superior rectal vein tributaries whereas the external hemorrhoids are probably the result of you know inferior rectal vein tributaries but you know sometimes what happens the internal hemorrhoid just prolapses downwards and leads to external one also okay now this is a beautiful diagram which is explaining everything nicely you see this these are the hemorrhoid these are the dilated veins prolapsed vein okay so here is the external hemorrhoid and this is a prolapsing internal hemorrhoid you see look at the color it is a bit differently shown so that you know you can understand it easily so this is prolapsing internal hemorrhoid which is presenting as external one so prolapsed internal hemorrhoid is a better term than the external one external hemorrhoid means when it is developing below the dented line so another picture which is a uh, you know very making your concept quite clear internal hemorrhoid see this it is originating above the dental line but it may prolapse downward this is external hemorrhoid this is external rectal plexus internal rectal plexus okay and in this condition both are combined together uh, origin is above the dented line as well as below the dented line also so mixed type of hemorrhoids now let's you know classify these hemorrhoids in other way one is internal and external we have done that so another way of classifying them is uh, under different grades according to the severity okay according to the severity now what are those grade 1 hemorrhoid means it do not prolapse out of the anal canal it do not prolapse out of the anal canal but it is already there it is already developed those those venous cushions are already engorged or enlarged but they do not prolapse out of the anal canal grade 2 means prolapse on defecation but they reduce spontaneously they may come out a defecation but when the patient is done with defecation they go back spontaneously patient doesn't need to push them back that is grade 2 grade 3 hemorrhoid means it require manual reduction patient needs to push that back after defecation you know they keep on hanging there the patient is pushing them back with the help of their hand okay and sometimes the tissue paper and things like that can be seen when we examine that it will come come to that later on and grade 4 means it cannot be reduced it is there all the time and this is the most complicated you know grading definitely because it will compromise the overall lifestyle of the patient it will compromise because patient will have difficulty to sit now okay uh, it 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 may have some you know secretions there the the underpants would be swelled up so all these things would be there so stays or grade 3 i should say grade 3 and grade 4 has to be treated surgically and grade 1 and grade 2 we can manage medically or with some other type of treatments but grade 3 and grade 4 once the patient reaches that you know there's no other way we definitely needs to go for surgery now uh, this is uh, another type of you know presentation uh, regarding these grades okay some symptoms are also given and a treatment is also given here so let let us go through that now let us make our concept quite clear here grade 1 protrudes into the lumen but no prolapse outside without protruding into the lumen we don't call that hemorrhoid 
isn't it hemorrhoid means uh, the 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 venous cushions are already enlarged they are already engorged they are already dilated or tortuous and they protruding into the lumen so the patient present with bleeding here okay bleeding on the surface of the stool or the fecal matter so treatment is non resectional measure means conservative type of treatment we are going to talk about that second grade is prolapse with straining for the spontaneous return again the clinical feature is bleeding and patient feels okay uh, there is a prolapse prolapse means it is coming outside outside the anus again non resectional measures are done means no surgery you know we don't go for surgery still grade 3 prolapse is there and it requires manual reduction Now, already a bit of complicated the patient will have this feeling isn't it oh again it is going to come down and i need to push it back that type of feeling is there so bleeding prolapse mucus swellage see this the the under pants or under garments are you know swelled already and pruritus because of this pruritus means itching itching in that area now look at the treatment here we can consider the trial of non resectional measure but many of them require excision excision means surgery so surgery is strongly necessary here and stage 4 prolapse cannot be reduced even if the patient tried and this is the most severe condition uh, it will present with bleeding a prolapse mucus swellage pruritus and even pain and treatment is definite excision there is no other way this is a very good concept of hemorrhoids here now let's talk a bit about epidemiology hemorrhoids are very common all over the world now in the you know beginning we talked about it is uh, quite common in the developed country because of the western type of diet but trust me this is also equally common in our part of the world these days hemorrhoids seem to affect men more often than women and women tend to be susceptible at particular time like in pregnancy and the purpurium okay purpurium means after the delivery of the baby up to 6 week that is called purpural period now what are the uh, clinical features hemorrhoids often only produce intermittent symptom now, what does that mean it's very important one many of us suffer from this okay so sometimes what happens uh, even though the patient is having grade 1 hemorrhoid grade 1 uh, if the patient is uh, taking good diet the fiber containing diet good diet means fiber containing diet here then there is no constipation there is no passage of hard stool so there is no bleeding and patient is asymptomatic but when the same patient okay is suffering from constipation then because of that hard stool passes there will be bleeding on the surface of the stool that's why it is intermittent symptom symptomatic episodes are often precipitated by constipation these episode usually last from a few days to a few weeks okay and they are quite scared isn't it if we see blood on our stool you know we are scared maybe if we are a medical person and if we uh, also suffer from you know tenismus or some mucus in the stool maybe we think of dysentery and we take one or two course of antibiotic also but uh, this is not a case of dysentery here there is no mucus usually there is frank red blood on the surface of the stool and we are quite scared to see that and definitely we seek medical attention often they are completely asymptomatic between the episode the most important symptom when they present is bleeding after the defecation okay or bleeding with defecation it may just stain the toilet paper or is streak the surface of the feces this is very typical feature it streak the surface of the fecal matter and this fecal matter is usually hard or when when the patient is done with with you know defecation when they are using the toilet paper then there is staining of the blood there 
Sometimes, if it is copious, copious means massive, it may splash around the lavatory pan. Okay, so there is a more bleeding during that time. Very typical features of hemorrhoid. So, apart from that bleeding, there is fecal swelling. Depends on the grading, especially in grade three or grade four hemorrhoid. Remember. There is swelling of the undergarments. There is mucus discharge. Again, it will swell the cloth. There is pruritus ani. This is itching around the anus. That itching is because of the swelling and the mucus discharge. This is quite, you know, a prominent feature. Occasionally, there is pain. Now, this is quite an important point to understand. This pain is mainly because of thrombus formation. Okay, thrombus formation in that uh, hemorrhoid. And uh, usually external hemorrhoids are painful than the internal one. Sometimes it is so severe pain that patient needs hospital admission because of this. And another one, it may felt as a rectal mass. So grade two to four may be felt as a rectal mass. Remember, in grade 2 also, there is prolapse outside, but it is spontaneously going back. Grade 3, patient needs to push it back, and grade 4, it cannot be even pushed inside. So all of them can felt as a rectal mass. So these are clinical features of hemorrhoids. Now, what are the differential diagnosis? What are the condition which can be considered as the differential diagnosis of hemorrhoid? See there. First is perianal hematoma. Perianal hematoma. Now, this is collection of blood clot around the anal lesion. This lesion is always covered by the skin, which distinguishes it from the mucosa covered prolapse hemorrhoid. Now, hemorrhoid covered by mucosa of the anal canal. Okay, so it is easier for, for us to distinguish. Now, can you, can you tell me what is the big difference between skin and mucosa? Yes, of the anal canal, okay? I'm not asking about other mucosa, especially of the anal canal. What is the difference? What is the epithelium of the skin? Which epithelium is there on, on our skin? What is the epithelium there? Yes? This is? stratified okay stratified squamous epithelium keratinized keratinized type on the skin it is keratinized always on the skin okay on the skin but on the mucosa on the mucosa it is non keratinized type it is still stratified squamous epithelium but it is non keratinized type in the mucosa of the anal canal whereas on the skin it is purely keratinized, but epithelium is exactly, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Above the dented line, you know, it's a different one already talked about. Below the dented line, uh, in the lower half of the anal canal, uh, the epithelium is a stratified squamous, non keratinized type. And the last part of the anal canal, which is very near to the skin, the epithelium is almost like a skin almost like skin, it is keratinized type, okay? So these are the important point. Anal fissure is another uh, differential diagnosis of hemorrhoid, anal fissure. And this is considered especially in external type of hemorrhoid or painful type of hemorrhoid because anal fissure is a very painful condition. Other differential diagnosis are rectal prolapse. This is a condition where rectal mucosa is prolapsing outward. And even hemorrhoids can prolapse outward, so it can be considered as a differential diagnosis. Anal polyp, it may hang outside, so can be considered inflammatory bowel disease because they present with blood on the stool. And even rectal carcinoma, okay, uh, it has got mass inside, patient can feel that mass sometimes, it may hang a bit downward, and more importantly, it also present with blood on the stool. So these are different uh, differential diagnosis of hemorrhoid. Now, 
these are the investigation which we can do in a case of hemorrhoid. Uh, we will start with the digital rectal examination first. Okay, DRE, digital rectal examination. Also known as per rectal examination, okay? According to the different literature, it is mentioned. So this is a finger examination of the rectum and anal canal. It helps to exclude carcinoma and provides a useful measure of the anal tone. When, when we are inserting our finger there, then first we, we judge is the anal tone, whether the anal tone is very high or it is normal, or it is even decreased than the normal. And if we feel mass there, you know, we, we may think about cancer or some other disease. Note that hemorrhoids are often not palpable on digital examination because they empty with the pressure from the examining finger because they are having blood inside. They are not having solid tissue inside. So when we press them with our finger, with our globed finger, of course, okay, they will get emptied and we cannot feel them. So this is a big point regarding digital rectal examination. If we still feel mass there with our digital rectal examination, then it is not hemorrhoid, probably it is something else. Proctoscopy is another important investigation. Now, proctoscopy is the endoscopic examination of the rectum. Procto is the term we use for rectum. It is necessary to diagnose first or second degree piles, and piles are seen bulging into the lumen as the proctoscope is withdrawn. Piles is another term of hemorrhoid, another term for hemorrhoid, piles. It's a common layman term. So when we do proctoscopy, we can see them, you know, and especially when the proctoscope is slowly taken outside, we can see those hemorrhoids or piles bulging into the lumen, and that will almost confirm our diagnosis. Another is sigmoidoscopy. Now, this is an endoscopic examination of the sigmoid colon, and it is indicated if there is a history of bleeding or there are symptoms which are suspicious of malignancy. Otherwise, uh, it is not necessary. But remember, there are so many differential diagnoses to, to, so to rule out uh, cancer, we may go for sigmoidoscopy. So we're talking about hemorrhoids. Now, how do we manage? A manage a case of hemorrhoid. There are two types of management, conservative and surgical. So let's start with conservative management first. See here. Regarding the conservative management, okay, first is ensure the perineum is dried just to have a symptomatic relief. Because uh, in this case, you know, usually the perineum is soiled with uh, some mucus, okay, with a bit of blood, maybe it is dried up there. So perineum should be dried and washed properly, especially if we apply talcum powder there, then uh, perineum would remain dry. This is just one of the symptomatic or conservative management. Another one is a digital replacement of the prolapsed hemorrhoid. And patient should do that. They should not, you know, uh, 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 keep hemorrhoid just prolapsing there. But this is just a symptomatic relief, okay? It is not a permanent solution at all. It will again come back when the patient defecate next time. Application of local anesthetic cream and ointments especially in painful type of piles or hemorrhoid. This will help the patient. And then we can reduce the spasm of internal anal sphincter by applying glyceryl trinitrate ointment, also known as nitroglycerin ointment, because we know nitroglycerin is a muscle relaxant. Okay, it's a muscle relaxant. So this is a very popular type of treatment, not only here, uh, in case of anal fissure also, we can use this. Now, another uh, modality of treatment is botulinum toxin injection. Now, how it helps? How botulinum toxin helps? Anybody? Maybe it causes flaccidity. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. It, it, is, it relaxes the muscle. Again, the similar type of effect. Remember, botulinum toxin is produced by Clostridium botulinum uh, type of bacteria. 
and uh, this uh, toxin uh, you know uh, doesn't allow the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic vesicle it doesn't allow the release so if acetylcholine is not released then there is no muscle contraction and this principle is utilized in the treatment here this botulinum toxin is a expensive type of treatment and it is also used in some other purpose for example if if uh, uh, a bit of uh, older middle aged to older ladies especially if they develop wrinkling of the face if they develop wrinkling of the face and if they want to get rid of that you know they are injecting botulinum toxin and it really helps but they need to keep on repeating this time and again let's move on now what are the other modalities of treatment which we can do in the outpatient basis outpatient intervention or outpatient basis you don't need to admit the patient in the hospital but if the patient presents with hemorrhoid then we can do this type of therapy they are known as sclerotherapy rubber band ligation photocoagulation and even cryotherapy sclerotherapy means you injecting some sclerosing agent on those hemorrhoid and destroy them or sclerose them rubber band ligation is the same type of principle you apply the rubber band at the base of those hemorrhoid so that they will get necrosed and fall off with this a small amount of bleeding will happen and that will stop on its own this is rubber band ligation very commonly used treatment is this quite easy also photocoagulation and cryotherapy are to destroy those hemorrhoids now these treatments are appropriate for grade 1 or 2 hemorrhoids only in grade 3 or grade 4 hemorrhoid we, we do not usually go for that we definitely go for surgery okay and one other one is they are they are uh, having larger pile that is grade 3 or grade 4 but they do not wish to undergo inpatient treatment or surgery people are like that also they are very afraid of surgery they think okay if if i go go to surgery then there will be extensive damage something like that and even with a good counseling you cannot change their thinking so you can still go for this type of therapy now this is one picture which i have collected uh, just see here this is a internal hemorrhoid which is hanging there isn't it which is prolapsing there so this is a rubber band ligator so you catch this you know a uh, hemorrhoid with ligator and then you shoot it okay just like a gun okay you shoot it just like a gun this rubber band will go and attaches or apply itself on the base of this hemorrhoid and over a period of time this will get necrosed and fall off this is the principle of rubber band ligation this type of therapy is also used in esophageal varices the the principle is same what are the inpatient intervention now they include gentle anal dilation under general anesthesia anesthetic sorry and hemorrhoidectomy so these are the two way one is anal dilatation under ga and this is known as lord's stress procedure and another is definite surgery known as hemorrhoidectomy the removal of hemorrhoid now let's talk about them one after other what is this lord's stress maneuver the lord's procedure or lord's stress procedure involve manual dilatation of the anal sphincter and it should always be done under general anesthesia because it may may be very painful procedure it results in lowering of intra anal pressure during defecation because you have stretch that anal sphincter with your hand okay so naturally it will make the passage bigger and the passage of stool becomes easier with the reduction in straining there is less vascular congestion of the anal cushion so uh, you know the mass may get decrease in size over a period of time but one important point to note here is 
if this procedure is done uncontrollably means inexperienced person has done it a doctor has done it then it may cause permanent fecal incontinence by tearing the anal sphincter okay especially in the elderly patient so lord's stress is one of the procedure uh, let me tell you once again if people do not want to go for hemorrhoidectomy then this is one of the option again but in grade 3 or grade 4 the best treatment is hemorrhoidectomy clearly see there so hemorrhoidectomy is the surgical treatment so for the piles are excised together with any surrounding skin tag and these are the indications the indications are recurrent clot formation in external pile this is a painful type of condition so we remove them failure of banding to control the internal pile we have done the rubber band ligation before but it fails to control it or the, the therapy fails it was not successful grade 4 piles when they are permanently prolapse outside they are not even going back after pushing and persistent bleeding all of these are strong indication for hemorrhoidectomy so these are some of the important points regarding the management of hemorrhoids now what can we do for the prevention okay for the prevention now, one of the important point here regarding the prevention is okay we should modify the diet we should modify our lifestyle regarding the dietary intake we should take more fiber containing diet and uh, you know it the diet should be made bulky okay. bulky means it has more fiber this approach may also prevent deterioration in patient who already have piles definitely in grade 1 or grade 2 pile remember uh, patient may be asymptomatic if constipation is not there because uh, when the stool passes down uh, there will be no bleeding if it is not constipated and especially uh, this is, can be maintained by increasing the fiber in the diet the time spent in defecation should be minimized if patient is taking a lot of time for the defecation that means this is a case of constipation so time should be minimized and again the same thing it it is controlled by the diet post operative management of hemorrhoids can be done by okay now again a good counseling regarding the dietary intake or the modification of diet the patient drink a lot of fluids or water any discomfort is usually controlled by the use of non steroidal anti inflammatory drug because pain may be there for few days after surgery so prescribe ansed drug and suppositories are only rarely required but if patient need they can apply for that like glycerin suppository it will make a uh, stool a bit softer and is easier to pass so these are some of the management you know issues regarding hemorrhoid so very important class Uh, from the practical point of view and theoretical point of view as well